Hello everybody, this is Red. Um, welcome to War Thunder Ground Forces. It has been released yesterday, I believe. And I got my hands on the Henser as soon as I could. Because they added this, uh, this beautiful tank in the tech tree for Germany after the release. And uh, it's magnificent. I really like this tank. It's got beautiful sloped armor on the front, which works. The side... Uh, sloped armor hasn't really convinced me yet, but just having a really good front armor really helps, uh, especially against heavy tanks like the KV-1. It's mostly no match against this tank. This tank is really good. It has an awesome, awesome range on this gun, and uh, it does a lot of damage. Oh, there's a KV-1 on my flank here. That's what they use. Turning rate of this thing is kind of slow, but uh, I think if you upgrade it, um, it's pretty good. And I just took out his track and his suspension, so that KV-1 is not going to move. Um, that's an undamaged. You really have to aim for that, uh, for the peaking holes for the driver, so the, the little windows. Uh, else, the KV-1 has really good front armor. That's what I've learned with the Hetzer so far. But once you hit that little hatch, then uh, then you're good. Let's see what we can do. Oh, destroyed. So, uh, the hatch. Uh, it's an, oh, there's a KV2 there. Holy crap! That's dangerous. Let's take this one on the way. Right. I don't want to waste too much time driving it from here that KV-2 is quite of a dangerous uh, piece of artillery. Okay, I'm not sure why that, no. that wasn't a hit. But uh, these are just AI T-26s. They don't really do much to you. Uh, but I have not uh, unlocked the artillery yet, so I can't really peek over hills and stuff like that. So we're going to have to uh, trust on the vision of the driver and the gunner in their field of view. The KV-2 here, I haven't played against this yet in my Hetzer. I've played against it in my Panzer IV, and um, that's a, it's a major struggle to take out a KV-2. Um, it's got massive armor, it's got a really big cannon, 105mm uh, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, I think I'm gonna get wrecked here for a second, but I just want to see what that thing does against my front armor. But this is gonna be extremely close range. Maybe it doesn't even notice me coming up. Well, it hasn't yet. Maybe I can just take it on one shot here. We got the loader and the commander. Well. He's not doing much. He's not really struggling, is he? Oh, now he's alive. Oh, get wrecked. That's the first time I ever killed a KV-2. I've never been able to, uh, to get them with the 75 mil before. Obviously, this cannon is probably somewhat different from the, uh, from the older type gun on the Panzer IV. Although I'm not sure if that's an older type. Uh, could be a misconception. But I, I really like this tank. There's even, uh, in World War II, there was even a more advanced version of the Hetzer. It had a uh, strange type of compensator on the front of the cannon. But uh, I'm not sure if that is gonna be, if, if they're gonna put that in. Uh, but even if they won't, you know, this is a really good, really good tank. And our cannon has just been taken out by an SU-122 that has a 122mm gun. It's a, it's a tank that I really despise for being in Tier 2, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, they are in Tier 2. Uh, it's a bit overdone, isn't it? <laughs> in Tier 2, the biggest cannon Germany will be able to get is a 75mm. 
and the Russians almost get double the size cannon, but, you know, the bigger the round, the more power it has to um, divide over a surface. So the smaller you round, the higher the chance of penetration is. Well, of course, a 9mm is a small round, but that's not going to penetrate much. You know, there has to be weight uh, behind the round or velocity. But um, in this case, if you have a really big, slow round, it's more likely to leave a big dent than actually penetrate the armor. Like the 75mm does and the 50mm. The 50mm is really good from what I've seen. Um, the larger caliber guns, like 100 and over, they uh, they seem to do a lot of superficial damage, but not really go in depth. Just now, I just took a hit right in the front armor, and it only destroyed the cannon, which is an external piece of the vehicle. The people inside were not hurt at all. Um, right now, I'm repairing the vehicle. And I'm very talkative about uh, War Thunder, because I've been playing this all day, basically. After I got out of college, uh, I went on my PC right away. You can actually see the rifling of the barrel. If you look into the barrel, you'll see the rifling of it. Uh, we're going to be repaired in 3, 2, 1. And there we go. Probably have a slower reload rate, but that doesn't bother me. There we go, hostile team lost all of its vehicles. All we, t all we got to do is take out the KV-1 and the KV-2. What? They are two soup they are two heavy tanks, so... Um, what they did in realistic battles is... A player gets three tanks, uh, if he has a light, light tank. So you get three lives, basically. If you have a medium tank, you get two lives, which also counts as medium tank destroyers, etc. And then if you have a heavy tank, you only get one. So that's nice and balanced. But some of the um, light tanks can have some really serious punch to it. Um, let me check my service record here for realistic army. And take the aviation off. Look, for the Panther II, or the Panzer II C, which is the reserve vehicle, it's the tank you start with in the... Sorry, very, very, very start. Um, I used that a lot because it had an ammo type, which is, uh, let me look it up for you, was a was an amazing ammo type that I love using. Um, the Panzergranat, which is, that's the name of it, but it's a 20 millimeter cannon shell rack filled with um, armor piercing incendiary tracer shells. So the red tracers, you can see perfectly where you're firing. They go at a muzzle velocity of 780 meters per second, and they pierce up to 31 millimeters of armor, but that's on really close range. Usually I take them out at about 100. That still takes 25 millimeter out, but you have to remember that um, the hatches, the top armor, the, the gap in between the turret and the hull, uh, if you fire in there with these tracer rounds, they will pierce far enough to reach very important elements of the vehicle like the driver the gunner the commander maybe even the ammunition rack or the fuel at that point you basically wipe someone out and um i can prove that by the score of um i just had it on there um yeah 45 deaths and 233 player kills i wonder how much that is let's calculate that um 45 was it that is a KD of 5.1-ish. That is not bad at all for, for, a, for a reserve tank. And I was blasting all the tier 1 tanks that are on the Russian side, which is um, BT-7s, T-26s, T-60s, the ZIS-30 or ZIS, and even the T-26E, which is the, um, the Russian premium light tank. Um... I did see some T-34 prototypes, but at the time I played, they were tier 2. They seem to be tier 1 now. I don't know how that 
what that's about, but uh, let's queue up again and um, I'll see you then when I get a battle. <laughs>